15 minutes after the hour now. Hey, the next time you fly, you might not have to tell the, the flight attendant what you want to drink. That same attendant might also be able to tell that you're a little grumpy because you lost your bags the last time you traveled. According to the Wall Street Journal, some airlines are using new tools to help them collect and analyze personal information on passengers. The goal is to help personalize your trip, but is this a violation of privacy? Travel expert Mark Murphy joins us live from Philadelphia. He's also the author of uh, Travel Unscripted. Mark, glad to have this conversation with you. How are they getting this information? Well, it's out in the public domain. So, I mean, let's face it, if you're on social media, you're actually giving your credit card to the airlines, you have your address, your date of birth, all that information there, guess what? They can go and look on Zillow, pull that data, and actually find out how much your home costs, let alone what kind of drink you might, might prefer. That might be a little bit harder to figure out, but that's some <laughs> of the information that's out there. Listen, I don't mind a flight attendant knowing that I like a sapphire and tonic with three limes, but what else are they looking for? I think they're trying to build a complete profile of you. What they want to do is they want to find out what your income level is. They want to find out what type of uh, home you're in, what, what the value is. They want to know all the demographic information and, in some cases, psychographic information so they can paint a picture of you to then know that you may be somebody who would respond to a business class offering. You might be somebody who, because based on your past travel patterns, you go to Asia a lot. So they're, they're, the different things that they can look at, get a better picture of you, and then target their marketing to uh, respond to, to get you to respond to that marketing. And it's no different than what the direct marketers do and everybody else. I think what happens with the airlines is if they get a little too far along and I think when they start figuring out what your home's worth that's a little too much that creeps people out and that's a turnoff and that's what they have to be careful about yeah it is a bit of a turnoff you know I was turned off the first time that I saw uh, some website I visited it created an ad or placed an ad of the, the last shop I was on online and every time I go to that website yeah. now it's the same ad uh, do you think this makes the experience better or worse for the traveler when you have a personalized experience, let's take the hotels, I think it's better. So if you're, you're catering to my needs, that's great. When you start diving into my personal life and things that you really shouldn't know as a vendor about me, it's all about opting in. If, if I want to opt in to give you information, fantastic. Take that information, personalize the experience. If I choose to be anonymous, leave me alone. And that's where the line has to be drawn. It comes down to opt-in versus opting out. And the, the average customer doesn't want you to dig into their personal stuff unless they're giving you permission. It's called permission marketing, and that's what they need to focus on, getting that permission. All right, well, I'm hopping on a flight after this show. Gin and tonic, two limes, but I'll wait what until What are you drinking? The, I'll, I'll wait, <laughs> gin and tonic, right. sapphire and tonic, two limes, but I'll wait until at least afternoon. Mark Murphy, thank you very much. Yes, sir.